Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I just made a video based on this email from Kevin and Elise Grant, and it had to do with the visitation of God the Father and Jesus Christ to the New K. Whitney store. Make sure to check out that video in case you missed it. Um, you can also see all the visions and visitations that I've collected on this spreadsheet called Timeline Visions and Visitations. The one I'm, that I'm talking about right now is this one, March 18th, 1833. Well, in this email, there were a bunch of different um, links to different articles and talks, and one of them was for this. Uh, this was a BYU-Hawaii devotional. Uh, the talk is called The Visions of Joseph Smith by Alex Ba or Boff. And, uh, you know, we covered this in that video, and as I was looking uh, throughout this talk, there were just so many different references to different visions and very interesting things. And so I was just going through here after that video and just kind of highlighting uh, things to follow up on. And I came across this short one right here in green. That has to do with a really interesting quote from Brigham Young about seers, how there are thousands of seers throughout the world that are natural born. And so I, I had never heard that before. Um, it's news to me. So I went ahead and I found um, the primary source. So we're going to go to Deseret News, December 26th, 1860. Page one, an article called Tabernacle. Okay, so again, just so much that I never knew uh, growing up in the church. This is really cool. On Sunday, December 23rd, 11 a.m., Bishop William Crosby preached to the congregation, exhorting them to walk in the path of truth and righteousness. Um, in the afternoon, Bishop Edwin D. Woolley made a few remarks on the remarkable events of the present year. President Brigham Young, okay, here we go, delivered an interesting discourse on the gifts of the Holy Ghost and showed that this people are destined to become a kingdom of kings and priests showed that the gift of seeing was a natural gift. Okay? The gift of seeing, like being a seer, that it was a natural gift. That there are thousands in the world who are natural-born seers. But when the Lord selected Joseph Smith uh, to be his vice-regent, um, or vice-gerent, sorry, <laughs> I just assumed that was regent, to be his vice-gerent and mouthpiece upon the earth in this dispensation, he saw that he would be faithful and honor his calling. He advised the wicked to forsake their sins, to love righteousness and mercy, <clears throat> counseled all saints not to touch or taste that which would pollute them, but inasmuch as they were righteous, to continue in their righteousness that they might be prepared to enter into the kingdom of our God. Okay, and this is it. This is it. This idea that there are natural born seers, um, which I guess isn't too surprising. We're talking about spiritual gifts. So maybe in that sense, you know, we're all born with our different gifts. And uh, some of those are, some of those gifts for some people are seers. Um, <coughs> okay, so. There's actually a follow-up to this. So this is 1860, and I came across this just a couple months later. This is February 11th, 1861, and uh, this is the Wilford Woodruff Papers. So I want to read this whole entry uh, where he touches upon this because I guess some people got the idea that, uh, you know, whenever you talk about these kind of like lesser-known esoteric things, people like to run with it and it looks like that's what happened uh in this account so let me just read uh what it says here by the way this is really interesting you see this little drawing of like these two crossed keys well when you hover over this um i guess this is something that wilford woodruff did because this is the wilford woodruff papers and uh i guess it's actually like a little code uh description keys crossed meaning priesthood ordinances I never knew that because I'd seen that before um, in other <clears throat> in other documents, but here you see it right here. So that's just a little bit of information for you. Okay, 
11th. Oh, I think that's referring to the 11th, February 11th. Okay. Bishop West took us into his sleigh and drove us to South Weber, uh, where we had an appointment to regulate that branch of the church. The bishop was in apostasy (laughs) and was leading away others. Uh, They had got a new prophet to slide out of the church upon. Okay. So a bishop was, um, I guess, following a false prophet that had arisen. And it has to, it, it seems like it has something to do with what Brigham Young said about thousands of seers. Okay. Uh, okay. So we had a large assembly of saints from other places. Bishop Cook came in and opened the way by singing. Okay. So the apostate bishop. Okay. Um, and prayer. I then called upon Bishop Richard Cook to speak and requested him to tell us his feelings if he believed in Joseph Morris as a prophet. So this is the the fraudster. Uh, To tell us so, and to tell us what his feelings were in relation to the presidency of the church. He arose and spoke some time without touching the subject. I again requested him to come to the point. He then said, yes, I do believe in Richard, in uh, Joseph Morris, as a prophet whom God has raised up to lead this church and kingdom, agreeable to the revel- the revelation in Doctrine and Covenants, which says, "I will raise up unto you a prophet like unto Moses." <clears throat> I do not believe that Brigham Young is a prophet, or has ever had any revelation or inspiration more than any sectarian priest, and I believe this church will only be known in name in ten years unless. God does raise up a prophet. (laughs) Well, he turned out to be wrong, as it turns out. Uh, When he closed, several of his party got up and bore the same testimony. Uh, We then sent for their false prophet and called upon him to speak. He spoke about half an hour. He said Brigham Young was not a prophet and Joseph Smith did not hold the keys of the priesthood and was ordained of man while he, Joseph Morris, was ordained of the Father and held six times more keys of the priesthood than Joseph did, he said he was the seventh angel and much other nonsense. <laughs> uh, you got you to love these guys. He presented before the assembly. When he got through, Elder Taylor spoke to the assembly and showed Brother Cook the position he was in. He bore testimony that Brigham Young was a prophet of God, and he said that Uh, He himself was more of a prophet than Morris was. Brigham Young, in saying, let's go to the next page. Brigham Young, in saying that he did not profess to be a prophet, seer, and revelator, as Joseph Smith was, was speaking of men being born natural prophets and seers. Okay, so this harkens back to this um, article, I guess, for this talk. Um that was reported in the desert news where he's like, there are, there are natural born prophets. And so I guess some people took that to mean, well, you're not one. Uh, I am though. (laughs) I am though. Okay. So there's a a clarification. So Brigham Young was not like Joseph Smith, not a natural born seer, but continuing, um, was speaking of men being born natural prophets and seers. Many have the gift of seeing through seer stones without the priesthood at all. Uh, He had not this gift naturally. Yet, he was an apostle and president of the church and kingdom of God on the earth, and all the keys of the holy priesthood and of revelation was sealed upon him. And the spirit and power of revelation was upon him daily uh, when uh, when he closed. I spoke to the people and bore testimony to the truth of what Elder Taylor had said. Now, just so no one's confused, uh, there's all different levels of uh, people's progression in the church and my audience. All 15, the first presidency, which is the prophet and his counselors, and then the, the quorum of the 12 apostles, they are all prophets, seers, and revelators. That's something that you become once you become an apostle. So Brigham Young is talking about these like natural born seers. They have this spiritual gift, but that doesn't give them authority. Um, It doesn't give them authority to like 
receive revelation for the church. It's just like any other spiritual gift that anyone might have. And we're going to talk about spiritual gifts in just a minute. Um, so anyway, continuing. <clears throat> so Morris had been cut off from the church twice for adultery in the territory. Oh, so this uh, false prophet cut off twice for adultery in the territory. And he had spent about one year with a woman whose husband was crazy. I told Morris that he was not a prophet of God. Neither was he the seventh angels uh, that when the seventh angel came to earth, he would not spend the first year of his mission with a woman whose husband was crazy and commit adultery with her. I showed the folly of Richard Cook and others following such a man. When I closed my remarks, Morris denied of being with that woman. Bishop West arose and bore testimony that what I had said was true. Uh, we then took all the names of the persons who professed to believe in Joseph Morris as the prophet of God, raised up to lead the church. There, there was 16 names given as follows, and then they list all the names. There's both men and women. Um, John Taylor then moved that those 16 named persons be cut off from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I seconded the, emo the motion, and they were cut off from the church without a dissenting voice. We then nominated Philo Allen to preside over the remainder of that branch of the church, which was carried unanimously. We also voted to unite the branch to Ogden under the charge of the, pres the president and bishop of that place. We took dinner with Philo Allen. Uh, we then rode to Ogden and spent the night with James Brown, 18 miles. I, I think that's miles away. And that's the end of that uh, entry. So you can see how people kind of go crazy when they come across these, like, again, these esoteric things. <clears throat> you know, you, you have those people out there that are looking for opportunities to make themselves special. And they look for any justification or any little tidbit of information. And then if they're successful, they, they run with it and get other people to believe them. So in this case, it had to do with natural born seers. So there are natural born seers thousands of them, but uh, that doesn't mean that you are the prophet or authorized to receive revelation for the church. Now, in the Book of Mormon, it talks about the gift of seership. This is, a, this is Mosiah chapter 8. Ammon teaches the people of Limhi. Uh, he learns of the 24 Jaredite plates. Ancient records can be translated by seers. No gift is greater than seership. Now, this is something I never really understood until I prepared this video. So I'll show you what I mean. You, maybe you already know the answer, but I didn't really know. Okay, verse 13. Now Ammon said unto him, I can assuredly tell thee, O king, a man that can translate the records, for he has wherewith that he can look and translate all records that are of ancient date. And it is a gift from God. And the things, sorry, and the things are called interpreters, and no man can look in them except he be commanded, lest he should look for that he ought not, and he should perish. And whosoever is commanded to look in them, the same is called seer. And behold, the king of the people who are in the land of Zarahemla is the man that is commanded to do these things, and who has the high gift from God. And the king said <clears throat> that a seer is greater than a prophet. And Ammon said that a seer is a revelator and a prophet also. And a gift which is greater no man can have, except he should possess the power of God, which no man can. Yet a man may have great power given him from God. But a seer can know things which are past and also things which are to come. And by them shall all things be revealed, or rather shall secret things be made manifest, and hidden things shall come to light, and things which are not known shall be made known by them. And also things shall be made known by them, which otherwise could not be known. Okay, so this has always kind of like intrigued me. And I, I was always, it feels like whenever I've read this, I've read it in the context of, or the understanding that, you know, being able to translate ancient records <clears throat> is a great gift, greater than any other spiritual gift. And I didn't really understand why that would be. Um, even these other things like being able to prophesy or to like see the future. I mean, I guess it made sense. I guess it made sense, but, uh, something got clarified for me, um, as I'm about to show you. 
Okay, so when we go to the Institute student manual for this, a seer is greater than a prophet. Uh, they have two quotes. The first one is from President Howard W. Hunter in uh, The Teachings of Howard w. w. Hunter, page 224. All right, he explained the unique role of a seer and how a seer views things differently than others. Quote, a seer is one who sees. This does not mean that he sees through his natural eyes, but rather through spiritual eyes. The seeric gift, and I didn't know that that was a word, the seeric, the seeric gift is a supernatural endowment. And then you have this from Elder John A. Widso of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in a book called Evidences and Reconciliations, page 258. Okay, so Elder John A. Widso of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles further described a seer as one who, quote, perceives the meaning of that which seems obscure to others. Therefore, he is an interpreter and clarifier of eternal truth. He foresees the future from the past and the present. This he does by the power of the, of the Lord operating through him directly or indirectly with the aid of divine instruments such as the Urim and Thummim. Uh, in short, he is one who sees, who walks in the Lord's light with open eyes. So it's much more than just uh, translating, you know, gold plates or ancient records or uh, the ability to use the Urim and Thummim or seer stones or anything else like that. It's essentially one that is like can see spiritually and it, it can include those things like interpreting ancient records or seeing into the future and the past and revealing things, which is pretty incredible. Yes, but it really seems that it's uh, just simply, uh, I guess, just like this one who sees like spiritually, he like understands, he sees, I guess, like the purposes of God, essentially. He, he has like maybe one who sees better than others with spiritual eyes, right? <clears throat> Perceives the meaning of that which seems obscure to others. So it's like others can't see th through certain um, concepts or spiritual principles, doctrines, but he can see it. And Joseph Smith all the time, uh, outside of using the Urim and Thummim, was always like uh, explaining doctrines and clarifying things and explaining this and explaining that. Uh, obviously, obviously, a lot of that had to do with Revelation, but it just seemed like he did have that gift of explaining all these things. Like you could go to him and he could explain to you any principle of the gospel or prophecy or or whatever, you know? So... I think I understand now. It makes a lot more sense. And and there are natural born seers uh, based on what uh, Brigham Young said. It's a spiritual gift. Uh, obviously, some of them probably waste that. Um, I'm, we all have our agency, so I'm not sure that every person has, that has the gift of seership even joins the church um, or uses it correctly. We have to be aware of that, but it's just, these are interesting concepts. Um, lastly, I just want to talk about gifts of the Spirit, um, in case you're new to the, to the church or you're not familiar with this concept. Um, here are some examples. There, there's lots of different gifts of the Spirit, okay? It's not like you can find like a list uh, that lists all the gifts of the Spirit. You can find lists of some, but let me just read this. So this is from... Um, Elder Robert E. Hales, uh, at this time he was presiding bishop, but he later became a member of the Quorum of the Twelve. This is a BYU devotional, and the name of the talk is Gifts of the Spirit. Um, if you want to learn more about this, you might want to read this talk, but I just want to read this part. The gifts identified in section 46, so that would be of the Doctrine and Covenants, give rise to other gifts, such as <clears throat> the gift to ponder, looking to God for direction, the gift to hear and respond to the still small voice, the gift to be calm, which includes the ability to curb anger and to be temperate rather than contentious. Uh, that's something I, I need more of. Uh, the gift to study and to listen. 
and perhaps the greatest of all, to have charity. And of course, he's not contradicting the Book of Mormon, that charity is a a really high spiritual gift. It's absolutely necessary for you to um, have charity when it comes to like the final judgment. And then continuing, uh, there are many gifts. Bruce R. McConkie wrote, quote, spiritual gifts are endless in number and infinite in variety, end quote. That's from A New Witness for the Articles of Faith, page 371. So, yeah, we, we do have like a list of some of the gifts, but in reality, they're infinite. And we need to, we need to pray and discover what those are. We need to read our patriarchal blessings. Um, and those things can be revealed to us and we can exercise them and get better at using them. Uh, there's also this, um, has a few other, you know, gifts that I want to point out as examples, the gift of tongues. Um, it talks about here how a missionary called to a foreign country, for example, may be promised the gift of tongues to help him or her learn a new language. Um, a newly called teacher uh, may be told to seek the gift of teaching. So, <coughs> excuse me, there's all so- there's all sorts of gifts. Uh, this is duties and blessings of the priesthood, basic manual for priesthood holders, part B. So, I'll leave the links the links for these uh, in the description box of the video, like I do for each video. But anyway, I'm going to add this to my spreadsheet. I haven't done it yet because it's late, uh, but because this was short, I just wanted to quickly do this video. Um, it's just really cool. The idea of thousands of uh, people that, that, that are natural born seers. So that's cool. Uh, don't get all crazy and start acting like uh, this false prophet here and trying to branch off and start your own church or, or take over the church. Um, that's not right. Okay. Everything is in its proper order, but you know, pray, pray to know what gifts you have. Okay. That's going to be for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.